We're starting this morning with news on the economic front. The election is less than two weeks away. The burning question on many people's minds when they go to the polls will be, are things getting better? We're going to talk about that right now with Diane Swank. She's chief economist at Mesro Financial in Chicago. Thank you so much for being here. Pleasure. A lot of economic news out today. We're going to delve into the nitty gritty in just a moment. But what I want to know is, you go to cocktail parties. People must come up to you all the time. I hope they give you a, a drink <laughs> first. But and say, Diane, are things getting better. How do you answer that question? You know, um, I think they need a drink after they talk to me, but, um, you know, there's so much uncertainty. The issue is that we're sort of the flip side of the 90s. The 90s were robust growth and all certainty thrown to the wind. We were willing to invest in companies that didn't have revenues, let alone profits. And almost anybody who had a pulse could get a job, which was a wonderful environment. Right. Um, but it was a bubble. The 2000s, and since the, the, the recession, the Great Recession hit, we've been in a vicious cycle of subpar growth and extraordinary uncertainty. And it's feeding each other. The hesitation that we've seen with the fiscal policy, with what's going on in taxes out there, what's going on in spending cuts, all this uncertainty. Now CEOs are coming out and saying, you got to do something, you right. got to do something now. That's actually had a cost in of itself. And you know, when I go to Washington, I've been trying to work on these bipartisan groups to come together to sing a little kumbaya. They don't seem to know that song in Washington. <laughs> right. But you know, the reality is, um, they're always quoting Churchill, you know, you can always count on Americans to do the right thing after they tried everything else. Right. There's a cost hesitation. When we liberated the POW camps in Germany, they cheered. When we liberated the concentration camps, they said, what took you so long? Hesitation is our greatest enemy right now. And you think that's the biggest. So you can't give people, like when they say yes or no, things are getting better, you can't they're, give them that they're, answer. They're, they're, they're better than they were as things were falling apart in right. 2008, but, um, uh, and we're not on that slippery slope anymore, but are they consistently better? No, it's like a relay race. We've got, you know, different parts of the economy handing off, you know, at different times, you know, to the Good caring. and bad, right. Right, but there's no one running all together. Let's break it down a little bit. Let's talk, talk about employment. I mean, this is obviously the big thing on everybody's mind. Um, you know, first time jobless claims were seen fell by 23,000 uh, in the latest week, which is a good sign. They were revised upward from the, the week prior. We've got a unemployment rate just under 8%. Is this sort of a new normal for us, Diane, this unemployment rate, you think, until the economy resets and people's skills match the actual jobs better that are there? You know, well, the, where the job shortages are, not where people think. Um, the job shortages are in 18-month licensing, occupational certificates, and those actually take less time to fill and get trained for. Weird enough, engineering wages aren't being bid up. And I get lots of emails from engineers saying, we're short of engineers, why am I not getting a job? Well, they're looking for engineers with 10, 20 years experience in fields that we didn't, we haven't used in a long time. Energy, for instance, chemical industry. So um, it's not a new normal, it's, um, we, it's, un, it's un, unacceptable. And so, I think that's the reality, but it is gonna take a while to, to erode this unemployment rate. And the Fed is trying to be the only lifeboat of uncertainty in a sea of uncertainty. They're trying to say, you know, we're willing to keep the punch bowl out there and let you guys get drunk a bit, but no one can get access to the punch bowl. We're, so on, a, we're, no on, a, we're on a drinking theme today. You I know, know, I'm sorry. People, <laughs> they, they drink when they're happy and they drink when they're sad. That's true. And, that, and that, I found it at those cocktail parties. So maybe <laughs> you should go into the spirits industry because that seems to be good when it's bad there and go. good. Let me ask you this. If you were going to advise college graduates who are starting right now, you know, they're going in as freshmen, what sectors you think are going to be hot in the next four years when they get out of school, what would you advise them to study? Actually, first of all, be plan on doing a graduate degree as well as an undergraduate degree because the only way you get really reap returns from education now in any major way is to have a graduate to be, so go into something you're passionate about. To be honest with you, I got a job um, coming out of school in economics that paid less with a graduate degree, and then I got another graduate degree, um, less than being a uh, less than being a waitress right. and a mate. Um, so you know, doing what you're passionate about, what you love to do, and staying in your field, and then getting expertise in that field—that's right. how you're going to make it. You're not going to make it with a generalized, you know, this is just a liberal arts background. It's great, right. um, but you need to focus in on what you love. And I didn't find out what I loved until I accidentally fell into my first economics course in my sophomore year, and it was the only course that wasn't closed. So there are no sectors you think would be particularly hot in four years. Actually, I do think in four to ten years, I think technology is not dead. I think we're in the next phase of technological revolution. So technology is still really big. Um, my son, he's going to be 15. He wants to be a game designer. And he, he's really good at Japanese, not so good at English. But at Japanese, <laughs> he's really good at because the game designers are Japanese. But you know, these are the things. Technology, I do think, is going to be hot. You know, housing's not dead. It's coming right. back. It's going to be much better four years from now than it is today. Um, there are a lot of areas that are still going to be, are, are, you know, it's the imagination. My daughter is a writer. She's um, a journalist and a creative writer. And she says, well, there'll be no jobs 
for me. And mm -hmm. I said, you know what? The ability to transfer information into knowledge yeah. in a knowledge-based economy will be worth something. It will be a job. We don't know the description of no, it yet. Con content providing. Very, very good point. All right. Absolutely. Diane Swank, thanks so much. She, you can follow her on Twitter at, at Diane Swank. Yes, thanks so can. much for being with us here on Lunch Break. Thank you. See you soon.